Welcome to 7 Woodcraft. Today here is the carving that you asked for, and I want to be able to tell you that this is building on to the step-by-step -step process, to be able to show you just how easy the 3D carving can be. I'm taking several pieces of clip art from the Car Pro, and adding it together into one project so let's get started. To begin this project today I'm going to create a new file. This is going to be a single-sided feature. Our project size is going to be 16 inches by 9.375 inches. For this project, for this project I'm going to be using the thickness of the wood is 0.91 of an inch. We're going to go off the top of the material, and we're going to be in the lower left corner. Now because this is a 3D models, that we're going to be putting together today. I do need to have the model resolution set on high. And with that selected I'll just hit OK. I want to take three different models, from the clipart library, and combine them together into one project. I want to find a panel, and we'll double click it, and that will bring it up over into this area. Now one of the things that I'd like to be able to do, is resizing this model. I want to go ahead and split the screen, and I'm going to do so by having this tab right here. Selected now. I can see what it's going to actually look like, as compared to this design screen right here on the 2D view. It makes it a whole lot easier to be able to see, when you see it this way. Now the first thing that I want to do, is be able to see the actual thickness of this model. So I'm going to select the modeling tool tab. I want to select this area right here and I can see that the shape height on this is 0.5 inch. Now remember my total thickness of the plywood is 0.91 inch. So this is a little bit over half the thickness, but I think that will work. So we're going to start with this number, and this number is going to become very important. The next item of the clip art that I want to be able to bring in, is going to be the fish model. Double click on this fish model. It'll be presented in the center of the screen. Now you notice I have it green here, but I can actually see the fish over in this area, the reason being that it came in on the same level, so what I want to do is highlight the fish. I'm going to go back to the modeling, and be able to set a base height to be 0.5 inch. Then I want to change the height of the model to 0.4 inch. And by setting that, now you will see it sitting up on the surface before it was sitting down on the surface. And it was occupying the same space as the panel itself by bringing it up to this level. Now it's sitting on the surface of the panel itself. Now the next thing that I go back to my clip art, and I wanted this banners, double click on it. Resize it. Resize it. And again, we're going to need to change the height.
so I'm going to go back to my modeling tab. And with this still selected, I'm going to highlight the base height, and put in 0.5 inch, and the height to 0.35 inch. And now you can see that it's sitting up onto the surface. The next project is to have text on this ribbon. And I want to be able to have it, where it will follow this shape, of the ribbon as well. I want to be able to draw a line on this ribbon. Now with this line highlighted, click on the node editing mode, and now you can see I have two points here. Right click on the line, you will see pop up screen. Choose to Bezier, then adjust this arc to follow the ribbon. Then click Escape. Center the line in the middle of the ribbon, so when you add text will be in the center too, recenter it up or down. Ok now then we need to add some text. Click on Draw Text, then write, Gone Fishing. And set the height to 0.5 inch. Now click, on text, on the curve to get the text follow the arc just we created. With the text was highlighted, hold the shift key, then click on the arc. Click, on curve, then close. Now you can delete the arc. Now this text is really close together. And, if I scroll in, there's just not a lot of space in between these letters. So one of the things that I can do, is come right up here onto this icon, where it says edit text spacing. So I'm going to click on that, and now I can come in between these letters, and I can click on it, and you see how it close in. Well, by holding the shift key down, I can expand that out. So now, with this all done, let's go ahead and create some tool paths. First, let's go up here, and check all the material settings. The thickness of my material is 0.91 inch, and the thickness of my model is 0.9 inch. We want to create vector boundary. Go to Modeling, select the model, then click Create Vector Boundary. We're going to click a roughing path to begin with. We will use 1 quarter inch end mill to carve. Use offset boundary 0.25 inch. The machine allowance 0.03 inch. Use 3D raster, and check the box, avoid machine areas, this is new fetchers, come with this version, to reduce the time of carving. Then click calculate, then preview, to see the result.
Now let's go ahead and close this out. And I want to be able to add the finishing path. Now, this is going to be with an eighth inch ball nose, then use selected vector boundary. Use raster, then click calculate, then preview. Now we want to carve the text. Click on V carve and highlight the text. We want to use V bit 60 degree to carve the text, then check the box, project tool paths onto 3D models. Then click calculate, then preview. The last thing we want to do, is to cut the model from the material, so we use Profile Toolpath. The start depth is 0.7 inch, then the cut depth is 0.21 inch. Using 1 quarter inch end mill bit, and outside cutting the vector, add taps as shown, then use ramp 2 inch. Then click Calculate, the preview all the tool path. If anything need to adjust, in these files, go back and click on it, to recalculate. Save these file to send it to your CNC machine. Every CNC has different post processor, so check what is fit for your CNC. Thank you for watching today, and please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this video.